there's what the big blue marble looked like this afternoon. Looking at that national map, what we see is the main frontal system coming into the southeastern U.S., followed by an area of cold air advection stratocumulus that extends from Louisiana up to Ohio. And then behind that, that's going to be the snow track. And that's a closer look at it, extending from about Bakersfield, Texas, up through pretty much all of Oklahoma and the eastern fringes just east of Dallas. The infrared satellite imagery shows that the main area of upper level lift is moving into the Canadian Maritimes. And we're left with this frontal boundary at the surface and a series of cold air advection troughs coming through the Great Lakes region. And that's a pretty strong one in Wisconsin, producing some snow in Green Bay, Milwaukee, and down towards Chicago. And up in the Pacific Northwest, kind of looks like rain and weather, doesn't it? Well, this is mountain wave cirrus. If we switch over to the visible imagery, we can see that it's quite thick. There it is right there. That's the back edge of that band. This is very, very dense cirrus stratus, probably some alto stratus mixed in. And then on the back side, subsidence or downward motion in the lee of the Canadian Rockies. Looking at the surface plots, certainly not very much weather at the surface, strong downslope flow, and temperatures coming up into the 40s in many areas. 45 at Calgary and 41 at Cutbank this afternoon. So now that we are getting our feet wet with the weather, here's the surface map. Front marching eastward through the Carolinas into Florida and a very sharp contrast in temperatures, 81 to 80 degrees along the west coast. And I did see 85 around Orlando. And you contrast that with 30s and 40s in Alabama. So almost certainly a change is on the way. Cold polar air invading Texas, 30s, pretty common through that state. And that's part of this larger air mass that extends all the way into northern Canada. The leading edge of that air mass, that's pushed well into Mexico. Let me take you down into that region. Yep, that fronts all the way down to that gap. I forgot the name of that gap. However, yep, very strong winds coming into that area, very unsettled around Mexico City. And we've got thunderstorms, some rather strong ones in the Yucatan because the flow is strengthening in the mid and upper levels with that increased baroclinicity. Looking out in the Pacific, still got our oceanic high pressure pretty much parked over that region. And then going up into Alaska, rather mild. You can see a lot of rain along the Alaskan coast, temperatures up into the 40s around Ketchikan and Juneau. Same story south of Anchorage. But to the north, as you go into the interior regions, we start picking up that Arctic air, minus 42 at Old Crow, Yukon, and not so severe in southern Yukon, but temperatures are firmly down below zero. As you go east into Canada, yep, still got quite a bit of Arctic air in place. We go into this region right here, minus 30s south of Baffin Island, and we can see that the trajectory has taken that pretty much eastward instead of to the south. So that represents a change of sorts in the weather pattern. And then just looking out there in the Atlantic, unsettled west of Iceland, another deep system. And then down the coast, we meet up with that other weather system coming out of New England. Now, a staple of air mass forecasting is the temperature anomaly product. can very easily see that dividing line between Florida and Alabama. The blues indicating temperatures much below normal, and the core of that coldest air appears to be over Texas and Oklahoma. The western fringes, well, that's certainly entered the 
plateau regions of Mexico, and I would put that boundary somewhat like that. And as we get intense heating working on this area, we will see that region undergo frontolysis. You can see the impact of that downslope flow in Montana and Alberta, pushing that frontal boundary back, and temperatures coming up to about 15 degrees above typical afternoon readings. And let's take a sneak peek at the forecast. Going forward into Sunday, a lot of that polar air is still remaining over Texas, and we can see the cumulative impact of the downslope in the high plains. From northern Kansas up to Alberta, temperatures above normal. Then going into Monday and Tuesday, much warmer in the Canadian prairies, temperatures 40 degrees above normal, sort of a heat wave there, pushing back the back edge of that frontal boundary. This is the old polar air, not much left of it really. And then going into the remainder of the week, eastern Canada getting quite a warm up right there. Some more cold air coming south, but that's a fairly small piece of polar air, mostly affecting the Great Lakes region and the northeastern U.S., and temperatures moderate quite a bit. Another Alberta clipper coming south about nine days from now. Looks like strong zonal flow working on the Rockies and central U.S. And of course, we also have to look at that upper tropospheric panel. That's the polar vortex centered close to its usual position around Baffin Island, but quite a bit of influence all the way down into the eastern U.S. Moving forward into next week, a series of waves. The flow mostly zonal. I don't really see a blocking pattern here. The waves are progressing. The long wave, however, appears to be stationary on the west coast. Still hanging on to that PNA pattern. One little cutoff flow developing off of California. Towards mid-month, we see a split flow pattern here. There's the northern branch, the southern branch right here, and it looks like nothing particularly interesting at the end. However, this is a very strong branch down to the south, so that could be associated with an increase in thunderstorm activity in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and the southeastern U.S. As mentioned, we are close to record temperatures in Florida, 84 at Winter Haven, and there's the current conditions as we record this, getting close to about 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The 80s located right in this area here, and the highest, 83 near Orlando. So it's probably a good day to be at Disney World. Oh, there, there's my payment from Disney. I'm just kidding. But lurking to the northwest? Yep, major changes on the way. The front... Yeah, I'm probably going to put that about like that. And a large anafront setup. Lots of trailing rain and thunderstorms behind the boundary. It will be a cold night tonight. And we'll be setting records across much of Texas. Pretty much all of these light blue colored plots, those are going to be records for the date. Looking at 13 at Waco, 12 at San Angelo, and... 20s all the way down to Laredo and Corpus Christi. Considerable modification of the air mass by Sunday. 17 degrees at Pine Bluff. It will be continued cold across Texas, but not quite so severe. And then on Sunday afternoon, coming up near 80 degrees in the San Joaquin Valley. And for Monday, a warm one in Montana. And I'm not going to go into the rest of the week, but I did see some rather warm temperatures showing up for California. 87 degrees indicated at Burbank for Thursday. And then just a quick check of the warnings. We've still got a winter weather advisory for the New York City area up to Boston and a winter storm warning for the Albany area. Down in Texas, yeah, those are going to be those freeze advisories. Another winter weather advisory for northern Minnesota with those waves dropping out of Canada and then some wind warnings with that downslope flow in Montana. 
The action is winding down in the northeastern U.S. as dry air advection and cold air advection sweep through the region. Looks like rain there in New Jersey. And as we go up to the New York City area, we get into the transitional precip forms. Freezing rain coming down, but that band is not very wide. As we go up towards Poughkeepsie, upstate New York, not very much precip. Looks like the transition line extends right up through southern Boston, and then we get the changeover to snow up near Windsor Locks and west of Boston. And then it's pretty much snow all the way to the north. And then out in the Great Lakes area, getting some lake effect snows. There's one plume of it coming off of Lake Ontario and some more coming out of Lake Erie. There's a look at the vertical motion field at this hour. Looks like we are getting some help in the Great Lakes from some upper level lift, maybe all the way down into the Appalachians. And that's a pretty strong trough coming out of Minnesota and Wisconsin. That vertical motion field will move into the eastern U.S. region. However, it will be offset by the cold air advection, which helps to produce downward motion, and that will be the dominant factor. So we're not actually going to see much lift in the lower levels, but there should be some in the mid-levels, enough to support some mid-level clouds. And then a few more waves coming down the pipe there. One of them settles into the Texas area for the 7th and 8th, and we'll cover that next week. So if we put it together, there's our outgoing weather system. The wintry weather mostly confined to New York City, north and northeast. And that's pretty much gone by 3 a.m. Some very strong cold air advection coming to the northeastern U.S. And you can see some trace of that upward motion field, like right there over West Virginia tomorrow morning. And then we'll see that big ridge gradually move into the eastern U.S. This whole area will be cold over the weekend and then downslope flow and return flow becoming established in the central U.S. Another Alberta clipper for Monday and Tuesday. I don't know if you can see that, but that's going to be it right there. And the tail end, a warm front with strong downslope flow in the Canadian prairies. Some of that cold air does settle into the Mississippi River Valley in the eastern U.S. Looks like another reinforcement of cold air for midweek. Looks like much stronger around the Great Lakes, but the downslope flow pattern is still quite active all up and down the Rockies. Another cold blast expected for the 12th, about a week from now. And more snow for the Great Lakes region in the northeastern U.S., but that's 200 hours out. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. We'll see the supporters back here on Monday and everybody else on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.